let's use the secret weapon we just borrowed. <laughs> <clears throat> right, let's get started. First, choose a finger. A finger? Each finger leaves behind a slightly different imprint. So let's choose the finger that we will that will have left behind the clearest print. I can't really tell the difference at a glance. Quit procrastinating and choose a finger. I'm assuming they want us to choose the one that's the, the most- thumb? Maybe. Or I was gonna say maybe the one that's the most bloody. Like the pointer finger. Yeah. I thought, I thought the thumb was the most bloody, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, well, I think your normal fingers make more contact with- but, Yeah, I mean, the thumb, thumb is like sideways-ish. But yeah. it has a real print still. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, now it's time to check for prints. Let me show you how it's done. Emma's starting to get that sparkle in her eyes. First, we sprinkle the aluminum powder around. Huh? How do you do that? With enter. <laughs> See? <laughs> uh, looks like that did the trick. Do you not put it... I would, th I would, th I would think that you dip the thing in it. Or do you dust it off? I don't know. Let's, hmm. see, let's see if Emma can teach us something. <clears throat> the aluminum powder adheres completely to the print. Once the powder is well spread, just blow away the excess. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to use a tool for that. <laughs> yeah, her, we, we sprinkle it on and then blow it off. So we never use the pom-pom. Yeah, what's a pom-pom for? Huh? How do I do that? Phoenix? It's gonna, Phoenix. Be, it's gonna be another button. You fucking blow hard. With E! Exciting! I wow. know. E's for exciting. Imagine you're blowing out the candles on a birthday cake. See? I don't like how she's teaching me how to blow, like that's a thing he couldn't figure out. You know, like, you put your lips out and then you exhale. You go... <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. Wow, that looks like fun! It might getting... It might take some getting used to, though! <laughs> oh no! This is where we find out that Phoenix is an orphan and he's never celebrated a birthday before. Oh, that's sad. <clears throat> it's fine. We've never heard about his family, have we? Well, no. He just mysteriously went to school with Edgeworth, but like no context for, for Phoenix's life was ever given. I don't know if that would ever come up, but I mean, you know, whatever. People mention family eventually. He, We've been he, with these guys for like 50 hours. He went to law school. I'm assuming someone had to pay for that. Or at least help him pay for the that. The orphanage is very Aww. supportive. You got a um, scholarship Japan, Japan, for being an Japan orphan. Japan has very advanced orphanages. You mean uh, LA. It's an advanced orphan. <laughs> Extra orphan. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It won't go up your nose or anything. It can. Don't do that. <laughs> it definitely can. You just pour the powder on, on thick and blow away the extra. You pour it on thick? Mm-hmm. None of this sounds right. No. She's saying that we just basically just cover the entire print with like a mound of of aluminum dust and then just blow it away. You just take the whole container, you just pour it. You also can't put you also can't pour it on the print. What do you mean? The print's on a wall. Oh yeah. Oh my <laughs> so gosh. She's not even explaining this how we would do it because once again, there's a tool for this that she's just not acknowledging. She's not very professional. No, she's wrong about everything all the time. Those are the basics of fingerprinting, Mr. Wright. I guess it's better give it a try. Do even it even shows this! It even shows this! What am I dusting? It is a sandstorm. Yeah, aluminum. It's an aluminum sandstorm. You know, aluminum is like is the thing in deodorant that acts as an antiperspirant that people don't want in their deodorant anymore because they feel like it causes health problems. I wonder if that's because is that based on anything? You know, I'm not. Or is it just because people hear chemical and they're like, eh? I don't know. I'm not actually sure. That one I have to do some research into. I try to actually do research when this sort of stuff so becomes a fad. Like, I don't like chemicals in my stuff. I want chemical-free stuff. It's like, I don't know what chemical means. Like, well, like, like back when like people started using the word GMOs a lot, I looked into that. Like parabens I looked into and like phthalates I looked into. And like I try to actually understand like what these things are saying and they're not just like trying to take advantage of me, assuming I'm a dumb like member of the public as opposed to like all the different types of like coffee and food you can buy that comes with like 12 ads where they 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 have, they have like 
they say like 12 things about it all at once that are all like the different ways that it's ethical. Yes, yeah, like, like a lot I told of it you is before, a lot of stuff that you don't even have to verify. Yeah, I told you before that, that I had sunscreen that was gluten free and I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm sure maybe that I wasn't applies suspicious. to somebody. I wasn't suspicious of, a, suspicious of the gluten until you said that. But I wonder if aluminum, the reason it works is because it sticks to oil. So I wonder if that's why it acts as an antiperspirant is because it's maybe it's something like this where it's the oil <laughs> in your armpits. I like the idea of Phoenix just doing this continuously and being like, say when, say when. And she's like, mm -hmm. say when, say when, when, say when. She says when like now. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. Oh, I did a bad job. <laughs> 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 it's so white. Wow. <laughs> Maybe now we dust it? Uh, no, now you, now you blow it like a birthday candle. Uh, we just blew it. Did you just blew it? Yeah. Is that what your fingerprint looks like? That's not... <laughs> oh no, it's Yaddy Yogi again. <laughs> With his no prints. He's the murderer. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, there's gonna be a statue with a clock in it. She <laughs> said, aha, uh -huh, you did it, you found one. That looks just like a- What do you mean you found oh my one? Gosh. What do you mean I found what, what the print? You... There was a bloody hand, like a fucking Thanksgiving turkey made by kindergartners. Thanksgiving turkey. Thanksgiving there's a, a kindergartner hand turkey just on the wall. We already knew where that print was. I didn't find anything. Did you know that there were fingers there at the end of that hand print? <laughs> But this looks nothing like a fingerprint. Um, <laughs> now that you mention it, I guess it doesn't. What does that mean? Hmm, I think it means we're out of luck, loser. Out of luck? The person who left this hamper must have worn gloves. Oh <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> it was of no purpose. I thought they were about to explain to us that now we use the pom-pom, but nope. I thought so too. This was just all dead end. Which, which, if we were supposed to use the pom pom, then I was then going to be once again like, how are you pouring it on the wall? <laughs> it's you know, how are you pouring dust? You're on throwing the wall? it. You're throwing it. <laughs> it's like one of those, uh, the um, is that India that has like the powder festivals? Yes, that'd be fun. That always looked really beautiful. To me. <laughs> those are my favorite. Like, and every... then they just they just threw they just put that in Star Wars. Yeah, that was kind of like... A, that was a little... Mm, yeah. This is a real thing in real life. It's not really very sci-fi. Every year, I think it was, I think it was National it's Geographic. It's sci-fi because they're not white. It takes really nice photos that of that That makes it event. mysterious and foreign to us. Ooh, magic. <laughs> they, yeah, they, they just put the Powder Festival in Rise of Skywalker. And that's like not even the top 20 reasons why that movie's bad. <laughs> oh, no. But I was like, and also I was kind of like, come on, guys, can you be more creative? This, yeah, is, this is a real life It wasn't even event. different. It just was that. It was literally it just was that. That same but with festival. aliens in it. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> My favorite character in Overwatch actually has the has a, a powder festival skin now. Where she's just like her entire body's just covered in like patches of different powder colors. See, that's awesome. No, this if you get a chance, every year National Geographic takes photos of that event and their photos always turn out so beautiful and I like to look yeah. at them every year. I think it's called, it's, I think it's called ha ha it's Hoppy or <laughs> Happy. This is the perfect line. Sorry, guys, I'm getting it wrong. Don't tell me we've been wasting our time here, Phoenix. Phoenix, baby, I got, I got, I got level with you. That's almost everything we do. <laughs> hey, calm down. That's just the way it goes sometimes with scientific investigations. Could they have been wearing the gloves we already found? <laughs> <clears throat> Can we fingerprint the gloves? <laughs> the on the inside? Or well, <laughs> like cut them open and yeah, fingerprint the inside? Perhaps. I feel like the inside of a glove would get too smeary. I like don't, your fingers yeah. move around too much. Yeah. But it does seem a shame. I've heard that generally fingerprints are just way harder to get than like the shows make the mystery seem. things make it seem. Yeah, yeah. because like a, a, a print being clean is like so hard because people are gross. Yeah. <laughs> there's also a billion fingerprints everywhere, but also your hands are like. People like the like it, it, there's always there's, there's always like sliding and smearing that like fucks up the fingerprints all the time. It's never this perfect. While we're at it, why don't we look for other prints? Other <clears throat> prints, yes, Phoenix, like the ones I was going to go to in the first time that seemed like a much more realistic source of prints. It's 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 morbid, but like they teach you sometimes, or like if you get kidnapped, like how to leave prints on purpose, or like or like what you do is you bite the back of the car seat. So you leave a, a dental, dental record. record. Yeah. Yeah. So like if, if you ever get kidnapped, they implore you 
because I think the implication being that if you die <clears throat> to get justice for your dead self, you need yeah. to like you. There are places in a car where you can put your hands that are or, best for fingerprinting. Or if fingerprinting. you live and escape, you can you have evidence for your accuse for to, for to accuse them. That's the optimistic way of saying that. Yeah, but yeah, I was like, yeah. as a kid, I was always like, see, it's fucked up. As, as a kid, I like learned that, but I was like, okay, so yeah, I'll bite. This is where I'll, I'll bite the car if I need to, you know, someone to find my dead body. <laughs> looking for the lock, looking at the locker door again closely. It seems like there are fingerprints outside the bloody handprint as well. Let's see if we can find a clear print. Hmm. Fingerprints outside the blood. Like right there? That's interesting. Wow. So that looks like a fingerprint now, Keith. <laughs> That's a distressingly perfect fingerprint. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind yeah, of blow like... Blow again. Blow again. You can blow again! <laughs> like, more if the dust goes away. Did I not do it well enough? Hmm. Oh, there you I go. I didn't do it well enough oh. the first time somehow. <laughs> I was like, what? Why? Wait, why isn't it continuing? Yay! A print so clear, it's dazzling. Dazzling? D dazzling? Anyway. This print took a lot of effort to find. Whose fingerprint do you think this is? Um, because it's probably just a real one, right? Yeah, but it'd be such a pain in the ass to draw one. Oh, oh, oh I see what you're saying. Like, is, it, like <clears throat> is this the writer? Is this the artist? Like, I'm looking at my fingers now. Yeah. So I wanna your okay. your whirls. Whirls, yeah. Interesting. But let's match it up right away. Did it take that much effort, really? So we're not done yet? This is quite a process. No, you have to match it with something. <laughs> well, there's no point in finding a fingerprint. Phoenix doesn't know how fingerprinting works? But, yes. <laughs> I... Well, Gumshoe didn't have luminol. I've just... He's never used luminol before, and he's a, he's an actual detective as opposed to us. So, 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 here, so here's my, here's my logic. Lawyer. Like, even going outside the logic of, like... Like, how somebody would have to know this shit to work their job. I'm just thinking about, like, what inspires people to do these jobs. And a lot of the time, it's, like, it's media and stories about the thing. And, like, this is literally the first and most prominent it's trope like, yeah, in, all of, in all trope. of, like, investigative work is to, ha is to have this. <laughs> is he, have a fingerprint We teach you about that in school. We, I, like, yeah. learned about that in school Maybe they were harvesting our fingerprints. Now that I think about it, but yeah, they mean, had they us like did. they had us like put it in ink and then we put tape on them. And you pull the tape off yeah. and you can like see your fingerprint if you hold it up to the light. You know, no, they they absolutely harvested our fingerprints when we were kids. Uh, we went to this one front room that we normally didn't really ever go to for any other reason on the elementary school, and it was definitely just like the police fingerprinting the entire uh, school. Nice. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm not really clear on whether or not they're like my parents signed off on that or what the rules were or what. Probably but did. but uh, the police totally fingerprinted everyone in my school when we were kids. And that seemed uh, a little violating. <laughs> I was like, excuse me. <laughs> it's, just, when you, it's, it's one of those things where you think back and you're like, hmm. Well, Keith, don't, I don't love that thought. Don't step out of line. I don't love that. They thought. got you. They're fingerprinting us and telling us to pledge to God. And the and the flag, and all these other things. I'm like, all these things don't look great on paper. I'm already screwed because my whole family did an ancestry.com thing, so oh. it's like, you know, I can't get away with anything yeah. ever again now. Yeah, they not do any crimes. They have my blood forever. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't well, yeah? She said, "There's no point in finding a fingerprint and not knowing who the owner is, right?" You dumb motherfucker! Yeah, you idiot. I guess she's right. She's actually right this time. Look at the fingerprint data we got from Mr. Edgeworth. And point out the person you think left these prints. Huh? How am I supposed to know who it was? I could make it a I could make a pretty good I could make a pretty good guess. Look. The bloody handprint and the fingerprints are in different places, right? That means that the prints probably don't have anything to do with our case. So, whose fingerprints be most likely found on this evidence locker? The person whose locker it is? Yes. So it's Oh. Not. 
we're just doing this now. Some palm reader's gonna be like, oh, this means that you have oh. a turbulent future. It's, yeah. it's Gumshoe. Yep, because it's his locker. So it was pointless, right? Yeah, this was pointless. This is all this is all a tutorial for us to go check the, the print on the left that they know we found already, but aren't acknowledging for some reason. It says sixteen. Does that mean like out of out of what out of what rating is best for comparing? Out of sixteen, it, I think we got a sixteen out of ten. It was like white until like the last six. I think were red. So it's like wow, super match, hundred sixty percent match. This is how numbers work. <laughs> I'm ten thousand percent sure. <laughs> Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. So these prints belong to Detective Gumshoe. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You gave me this so what look. I guess that's probably because I was thinking, so what? Okay, so we came up with nothing this time, but there's always next time. Don't run out of powder. Yeah. Because <laughs> you or we have to order some more on Amazon and, <clears throat> and, ha and have it brought to us by a drone <laughs> so that we can continue our job. <laughs> Sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. You gotta roll with the punches, Mr. Wright. Thanks for the sympathy. Wait, if I remember correctly, there was one other handprint in this room. Let's check it out. I wonder which one. Can you find the print? Do -do 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 -do. Very good. <laughs> That's one of our clues. This is where we got a luminol, luminol fluid reaction, right? Right. There was a handprint here. Okay, want to try using this? No. <laughs> Does she... I actually have an option. I was joking. I was joking, but he actually, it's actually a yes or no question for some reason. Okay. Oh, that's the spirit. Let's go check the prints. Oh, but I have to warn you about something first. What? The, the area with the blood was wiped away, right? We only ended up finding it using chemical means. Any prints in that area will have been wiped away too. We, we thought about that. Oh, right. So that means no prints. Would you say the probability of a hypothesis is high? Don't ask me. Anyway, we must try to find the prints that weren't wiped away. Prints other than the ones left by the oh, bloody so hand. On the keypad. So they're saying that that they're saying that that was a bloody hand print that was wiped away. Well, yeah. Or they're saying yeah. It was either that or they're saying like us using the luminol fluid on it was like you know I think it's just the it's the part it's the fingers that aren't shown is what they want. Yeah. I don't think that makes a lot of sense in my opinion because if if you're gonna wipe that you're gonna wipe all of it. Yeah, they probably wiped all over the place. Like why would you just wipe half of a handprint? But I'm, I'm beyond logic at this point. Or, or, may, or maybe what they're saying is they did a bad job wiping. You know, that's what they mean. So there was blood there. Okay, so. Ew. <laughs> that is it's like gross. a shitty radish. Ew. You know, Keith, you were, you were saying, like, you're making a joke about the stranger. The stranger. So there was blood on that guy's handprint. He put his hand there, and then he tried to wipe it away, but he fucked up and only wiped off half of the handprint. So that's why we're able to test the other half. Because the fact that Luminol only showed up, like, halfway shows he, he, just, he did a shoddy job. Because he only wiped away the blood. Yeah, he didn't wipe away like, the whole hand. He just wiped away the part that had blood on it. He was very precise. Or something. It's weird because the act of know. wiping something and scrubbing it is, like, a very extra motion that covers a lot of extra space than just ex the exact spot the mess is on. Yeah. Like, it's not a precise surgical process. You're probably doing circular motions and, like, rubbing away at this thing, like... I don't know how you magically only get the blood half. <laughs> at least at least that's what I'm assuming she means, yeah. but... Hmm, I gave it my best shot. That kind of result won't be any good for matching prints, will it? It could be. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think they use partial fingerprints all the time. Yeah, but... but it doesn't look like we'll get a clearer result from this print. Okay, let's try a different finger then. So try where the thumb is. Or wait, no, or wait, is that the thumb? Wait. Or pinky, maybe? <laughs> Is the same one? Yeah, you gotta you gotta do the pinky. To be lower. Here, I'll put my hand up so you can see. <laughs> the answer was, the answer was go higher. 
Why? It's just because that was, I think that was the pinky. I think I was already there. That guy is a funky hand. <laughs> funky hand. It's, oh man, it's Dr. Funky Hands. He's the killer. <laughs> we could how could we have guessed? <laughs> Be in character for this game. Uh, that one. Jake yeah. Marshall. I like how it's like all exactly in the same like orientation. Yeah. It's not even like they're, sideways they're, they're or anything. They're perfect examples of prints. Yeah, it's weird that it counts up to 16. Oh, because it's counting 16 points. I wonder oh. if that's what they do in real life. That could be it. With the way the computer looks at it. I didn't, I didn't count how many gray pips there were, but I think there was only five red pips. So that means the meter is weird, Yeah, too. the meter doesn't make sense to me. Hey, these fingerprints, they... Whose are they? Whose? Is it someone I know? It's Officer Marshall. Huh? Officer Jake Marshall? But he works in here, so I feel like that's kind of a... Like, he probably is in here all the time, but I guess... I, guess I they, mean, everyone works here. Yeah, but I guess the implication is this was bloody once, so that's the difference. Because the luminol implies there was blood there. Yeah. Th that's got to be a coincidence. He's not involved in the crime. How do you know that? She likes him because he used to date her sister. She's got, like, this weird fetish for him because... Oh, no. Because he was nice to me when I was younger. She said, like, some creepy thing that uh, one time that really that kind of made me feel gross. Mm. Emma. This is decidedly different from De 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 Detective Gumshoe's prints. The luminal reaction. The blood and the fingerprints are in the same place. Oh. Oh. So we have Jake Marshall's fingerprints. On a wiped blood stain. But why would Officer Marshall... It looks like our investigation's finally turning up some results. I guess this is what you'd call decisive evidence. I... I don't believe it. I mean, how old is the evidence? Yeah, I don't know. How long does Luminol react? How long has the blood been there? I don't... I feel like almost no fingerprints in this room could be decisive evidence. Because almost all of them are the fingerprints of people who work here that could have been left in a... in countless different contexts. Fingerprints are kind of like an iffy yeah. form of... Uh, we did it! The investigation's over! Ye <laughs> only, one, only one more to go. <laughs> so we're starting court day two? Yay! So there'll be one more investigation. I forgot what the court looks like. The, one, the, the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, this, the investigations in this case are brutal. There is a lot going on. Not enough blue badger. Not enough blue badger. It is so loud. It's so loud. <laughs> Wabafet. Wabafet. Wawiji. This squeaky ass chair. <laughs> <laughs> Almost every position I can sit in makes it squeak constantly. It's so fucking frustrating. I bought it specifically to get rid of the noises the other one was making, and it made noises faster, louder. <laughs> Did you see that picture I it's sent you? Crimes. Of that late that lady advertising the chair. She's sitting yeah, in it. it looks she's, like she's having so the time happy. of her life. She looks so pumped. Um, my cousin was shopping for a, a gaming chair and he found a just a picture of a chair on the internet on like a professional website, but then next to it is a picture of a lady sitting in it as she's cheering for like what looks like a soccer game. Yeah. And she's like she's like having such a great time. She's she's well she's well beyond the point of too happy. I sent a picture to Keith because I was like, I think this is your new chair because <laughs> this lady's obviously doing a great job advertising it. Yeah. There we go. Time to solve this case on day two in a massive upset. Surprise. It's always a massive upset. The, the massive <laughs> I get upset. upset. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a surprise. <laughs> Defendant lobby number two. So, what do you think, Mr. Wright? I think the prosecution is as confused as we are. After all. The victim was murdered in two different places at the same time. And a different suspect was arrested at each of the crime scenes. Lana! Good morning, Mr. Wright. I apologize for yesterday. I was indisposed. I suppose they didn't hold you too long for questioning. We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters, though. Damn! So That's busy. <laughs> how'd it go? 
Is if Mr. Wright suspects, the police are clueless. I figured as much, so I struck a plea bargain. A uh, plea bargain? A, a plea bargain? What do you mean by that? We agreed that if I told them, them the truth behind this simultaneous murder, they wouldn't see capital punishment. That's what I mean, Emma. But Lana, don't tell me you... Much to my regret. I'm as much in the dark about this as they are. Miss Skye. Hmm? We found trace evidence of a certain person in the police department's evidence room. Somebody who would normally be there. Anyway. Because that's his job, you know. They belong to Officer Jake Marshall. What kind of trace evidence? Bloodstained fingerprints, to be exact. That's the trump card I have up my sleeve today. You do understand what this means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're going to accuse Mr. Marshall? And stall for one more day. Yay! Yeah, pretty much. We have to play the cards we're dealt. Isn't that right, Miss Sky? Is she gonna sabotage this because I told her? I feel like I shouldn't have told her. Yeah, you shouldn't have told her. She's yeah. already trying to throw herself under the bus. Yeah. I like Lana a lot. Like, Lana's like my favorite character in this case. Actually, no, no, never mind. Lunch Lady. Lunch Lady's my favorite character <laughs> in this case. But I really like Lana a lot. <clears throat> do what you have to do, Mr. Wright. She just looks like a badass. I'm gonna fuck it up. <laughs> she just looks like... She just looks like some glorious hero. Who's doing the equivalent of jumping in front of trains the entire game. She's like, she's, try she's trying to be like a martyr for somebody else, and I'm not exactly sure what her motive is yet, exactly. I, I think she's just yeah. trying to save Mr. Edgeworth. But either way, she's, she's some sort of glorious hero. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is... Hmm. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> hmm? I'm afraid you'll have to clarify. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach the police department from the prosecutor's office. Yet the victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain at both places at the same time. It's weird how everyone keeps saying this like it's possible or true. It's not possible. Like, the, as far as I can tell, the evidence doesn't even support this, this idea. No, I don't... See, we, the, we, ha we haven't we have gotten a lot of solid evidence on time, on time frames. Like, not exactly solid evidence, yeah. like not solid enough for us to be saying such conclusive We things. have a specific wet witness timing in the parking garage, and we have a completely different witness timing in the evidence room, and then we have a time of death that's open to a wide range that I think covers both of those times. Yeah, the time of death is very So flexible. everyone's looking at this evidence thinking, yeah, some, he died twice in two places, crazy. Somehow that happened, and it's like, no. <laughs> it's clearly not the case. All we know is that it's the same fucking person, so you have to figure out how that makes sense. Like, that that's irrefutable. Unless it's, they pull some bullshit, some, they move, like... They just move the body. Yeah, exactly. They just move the body. It's, it's much more simple than everyone makes it out to be. Wait, 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 is there a 5-9 number on that page of check-ins and check-outs? Oops. Keep thinking we have two apart. I keep thinking they're two apart for some reason. No. Nope, never mind. <laughs> I nine. thought maybe it someone... four nine. Maybe that that yeah, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Sorry guys. I thought I like stumbled I like upon something check, revolutionary. I feel like we could just check his handwriting or something. Yeah. So he goes here at 514. And then he's in the parking garage two hours later. And those are the... the, the those Wait, no, are... no, that's not two hours later, Keith. Yet? Yeah. Oh, you're right. <laughs> you did this last right, time, right, that's 512. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, 512. See, that's, that, that's the only thing hmm. that, that kind of screws us up is this. Is this part? 
Oh, wait, 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 thought, wait, 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 wait. we had different times than that. They Keith, are the same time. Keith, What's Bruce up? Goodman lost his ID. Someone used his ID to check into that room. Oh, right. He wrote, he, this is lost item. He, he, maybe he, lo he lost his ID. Yeah. Someone used but his ID my, to but, clock but into big, the room. <clears throat> my big, like, speech thing was based on the idea that, like, how the fuck are people coming to this conclusion? They clearly happen at different times, but, like, I had... I got, I got thrown off by 1712, and like in the back of my head I was thinking that it happened two hours later than the other one. Or, I mean, two hours earlier. No. Yeah, but, this, I, yeah I, had, I had in my head that this was two hours later, so I was like, he clearly didn't die, die at the same time, he got moved, but no. No, no, I we- fu I fucked we, it up. We knew that already because- I fucked it up! I know, we, we knew that already, because yeah. when we looked at the ID card record last time, I said- we, we talked about how that was at the same time. Yeah. But I forgot that he had lost his ID card, and we have a missing item report for an ID yeah. card. So obviously he, like, fucking lost his ID card. So someone used his ID card to clock into that room to make it look like he was there at a different time than he actually was. Yeah. I swear that the Crossout 9 is going to be something. I, like that's, that. I, mm. So I, I think you're right about the idea that this is going to be a lost item report for an ID card. Well, I think it was already told to us that it was for... Was right? it? I don't know if it was told to us. Because mm. this doesn't... Well, they at found... least, this one at least doesn't mention oh. an ID card. No. We found the ID... Didn't we find the ID card in the garage? Ourselves? Yeah. So I don't think... I don't know if it was lost. But if it was, if it was lost, that would be supported by this. Because if he didn't write down what item was lost... And I, I feel like it's because he got to the part where he has to write his ID number, and he did, and he couldn't write it because he doesn't remember because oh, his that's... ID's cards was lost, and so he gave up on filling out the form. I think you're completely <laughs> right. I think that's it. That, that's why the nine so crossed out is it. important. That could ex that could explain why. Uh, that could explain potentially why uh, he didn't fill it out. Yeah, why, why he didn't fill it out, and how, and how the uh, the timetable thing shows him getting into that other room. When he should have been dead in the parking yeah. garage, I'm guessing that either Marshall or Smugface uh, used the ID of Goodman to give him an, any. I guess an alibi is one thing to call it. Schrodinger's alibi for a corpse, like wow, he died in two places, to so just to fuck up the uh, evidence. I think so too. And then, uh, and then when Marshall was uh, guarding the. Uh, crime scene when we arrived, he could have just put the card back at the body. Yeah. Because he could have just returned it. No, he, he's definitely... That definitely feels like what's going on there, because this is really funny. <laughs> like, he's trying to write his ID number and he can't, because he doesn't remember the numbers. He's like, well, yeah, Because like, it's I... too long of a string of numbers to remember off the top of your head, and it's like, he totally lost his ID card. He could memorize it. But would you? I do... do, do you, have, you memor have you memorized your driver's license? 589293? Was that your driver's license? No. I was, like, I was like, you're not supposed to just come out and say the numbers, are you? No, that's my idea at work. Oh. I was, uh, yeah, I don't memorize it. It doesn't matter because you guys don't know where I work. And I'm, also, you can't use it anyway. I'm bad with numbers. Um, it took me a while. I just, I just had to fill out, like, just enough, like, forms to finally have a have it finally click where I I finally remember my social security number. Yeah, I remember my social like, security I, number. I, 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 had, I had to like reference it longer like I had, to, I had to check it more often than you'd think for a while until finally I just had used it enough times that I finally just actually remembered it. I think most people know their their uh, license numbers. I got shamed for not knowing it before. I was like you don't know your license number? Everyone knows their license number. You think most people know their driver's license number? You're supposed to, yeah. Because, because here's the thing, right? Is if you get, if you, like, I got saved once because I got pulled over by a cop. But I didn't have my ID on me, which is really bad. I was able to save myself by having a form that had my number on it, because that way he's able to actually like, or else he wasn't gonna let me drive home. So you like you recited your driver's license number essentially. Basically, or? yeah. Huh. So not knowing it's actually a problem, and then also they'll ask you to like fill out forms. Like if you ever rent a place at a hotel, they'll ask you to fill out your, um, your like driver's license number and stuff like that. Or if you have, yeah, you know. maybe you eventually memorize it enough if you use it enough times. But like I don't, I think I, don't, I actually I do heard, think I, I know mine. Heard of people memorizing it. Uh, I don't know it. I definitely don't know my driver's license number. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to. No one's ever told me that. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, 
Are you are you reliable <laughs> as a source of information for this? Oh, uh, just trust me. There's been <laughs> lots of times where I'm like, damn, I wish I remember my license number because it, you do have to fill out forms with it. But I always just have my license. Sometimes you don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> I always I always leave the house with my keys, my phone, and my wallet every time. It's just it's the muscle memory at this point. I lost my ID at a bar once, and Keith had to drive me to the bar to try to find it. <laughs> that did happen. Yeah, that did happen. And we didn't find it. No, it was in my friend's car. The victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain at both places at the same time. But that's not physically possible, is it? It's not. <laughs> What's more, I hear the victim uh, from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. Wow. This is one messed up trial. Aren't they all? So I guess the dates do support this terrible theory. I guess it just frustrates me that people aren't like... They're just buying into it. Well, you... My argument is... Everyone's you, you... either saying that it's true, or they're saying, Wow, that's impossible, and like nobody is even slightly... Like extrapolating from this, See, like that it's, that it's it's fake evidence. That's and my some, problem. Being framed, like yeah. it bothers me that another character's question that on that level. It's obviously it's not too, possible. It's too so obvious. So figure out how it can work because like, it, because somebody, that part's not possible. Yeah. So just you have to work around that because that part is just not possible. Like you you that's your fundamental argument. You build up from there. Like that it's, part's it's not possible. It's too blatantly you fake. You work up that from there. At at best, people just say that's impossible, and then they stop. And it's like no. Think about it, just just for a second. Like, just go somewhere with this. It's, it's not it's possible. It's kind of important, so it's weird that you're not questioning it beyond, like, wow, crazy. And then you just stop thinking. Like, so many, every character in the whole thing is doing that, and I'm like, come on, guys. <laughs> this is important. You're, you're all supposed to be invested in this. One of my duties as prosecutor is to present impartial evidence. Today, I will present evidence relating to the murder at the police department. In so doing, I believe the way in which we should proceed will reveal itself. Now that's what sets Mr. Edgeworth apart. He sounds so on top of which things. Which is why he's failed every case. Even though he doesn't know what what's going on himself. Because it's br false bravado and unearned confidence. Yeah, that's how you win things. That's how you succeed not in even, life. Yeah, not even real confidence, just projecting confidence. And that's supposed to be an admirable trait? People literally get away with murder doing that. Like, that's, just, that's how yeah. you succeed. No, our, our president does that. Yes. Every time he speaks, he's just pretending that he's knowledgeable about anything. And he's just, like, word diarying. Like, noise. Like, half-heard things he heard from three different people that day that are, that were his briefing, but he already forgot what they said, and he's just, like, saying stuff. And then, he's, and then he just goes, like, I'm, I'm very smart, and everyone loves me, and this is great. Like, he just, he's, he, like, it's so such a naked version of, the, like, the, like, like, the false confidence. You know that, how but people it, clean things. But it works things, on everyone. How people clean things and kill things with bleach. It's like, what if you could do that inside your body, you know? I'm a really smart man. <laughs> He recently had to brag about how he <laughs> ran down a ramp because it was very steep and very slippery and so he had to use momentum to run down because he's not going to fall and let the fake news media use that against him even though it would be real news. It sounds like something a kid he, would brag about. Even though him falling on a ramp would be real news. <laughs> Caught on camera. It wouldn't be fake news, but okay. But like, <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know how that's fake news. But yeah, he has to like brag about on Twitter how he ran down a ramp. It's like, I went down a ramp without chipping. I, I feel it's, I'm, uh, it's been a long four years. <laughs> it's been a long four years. Oh, yeah, I hope yeah, it's yeah. just four years. <laughs> Swear to God. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yep. 